Alonho.com is here with Sasha Sitkovetsky, sorry, <laughs> the uh, violinist and member of the Sitkovetsky trio. And we're here in uh, Jersey where Sasha's been performing for the last few days. And just have a few questions so that's fire at you. Go ahead. Okay. Seeing as you um, spend so much time with your violin, do you consider your violin to be your best friend? Um, well, for sure, it's. I actually. I, th- I think the longer you have an instrument, uh, you, you go very attached to it. So I've had probably about four or five instruments in my life. Uh, but this instrument I've had the longest. I've had this one since 2000, the summer of 2000. It's a wonderful 1753. It's on a very generous loan from a private collector in Switzerland. It's for sure incredibly important to me, and I love this instrument very much. So, no chance of strolling with another instrument? Um, well, <laughs> um, uh, no, I, it's, it's, you know, different instruments are different things, and I'm so lucky to be able to have this instrument to play. Um, so, you know, for me, it's, it's, it's Actually, very often people come up after the concert and, and they ask me about my instrument, and then they say how well the, the two seem to suit each other, myself and the instrument. So, so you made for each other? Apparently. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And um, so when you fly together, you and your violin, does your violin get a seat as well? Or? No, I mean, it's, it's because the case is not very big, it fits very comfortably in the overhead compartment. So, and I um, think um, to the British government, it's a, it's a law that. Um, because the the size of the violin case is outside the hand uh, luggage requirements, but there's a special law for musical instruments, for, for small ones like that. So, for example, for a cello, you would need to get an extra seat. Uh, but for a violin, it's fine. I just take it with me and put it in the overhead cabinet in the compartment. So it's just nice. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah, it's, it's, it's no problem. Yeah, we had, uh, there was a couple of months when it was a big um, issue, I think in the summer of '06, when there were the... Um, attempted terrorist attacks with the airplanes um, in England and after that they had an incredibly strict law for two months where, where nothing outside the small parameters of the hand luggage was allowed including instruments and so there were you know there were actually situations where some orchestras cancelled uh, their trip it was during the prom season so some orchestras actually cancelled their trips to the proms because they couldn't get uh, their violins uh, on board and uh, we, we cannot, unfortunately, put the violins at all into the into the hall. It's just not possible because the the, the temperature and the atmosphere there is just not uh, it's not going to be able to take care of a 200-year-old instrument. Um, so there was once I actually I traveled with a violin on my lap without a case because the violin by itself fits into the uh, into the restriction sizes, but with the case is too big, so they made me take it out of the case. And I literally, I just wrapped it around <laughs> and put it in a plastic bag and, and just carried it. And, and Did you play for the other passengers? Uh, no. no, no. Uh, <laughs> but it was a very scary situation and I felt really, really bad. I mean, it was, it was safe. It wasn't a long flight. It was only a two-hour flight. But, uh, yeah, but after that, because a lot of musicians, of course, complained about it, but the government actually passed the law. Okay, good. Yeah. All right. Thanks very much. Cheers. Thank you. Okay.